What's up, you guys? This be your boy, Scotty, and you're watching my review of the first episode of R&B Divas Atlanta Season 2. What is up, you guys? Before I get into the review, I just want to send a special shout-out. Well, I got a few shout-outs to send out, but I want to send, spend a, send a special shout-out to one of my good friends from college yet again. Her name is Chana Darcy. She got her own YouTube channel. I've been trying to push her out for the last few months. She got 25 subscribers so far, but please be kind enough to go to her channel and subscribe. Her name is Chana Darcy. I will leave the link to her YouTube channel at the bottom of the video um, after it's done uploading or whatever because I'm doing this from my phone. So, you know, it is what it is. But please go and check her out and subscribe to her or whatever. Let her know I sent you. And, um... Uh, let's see. Okay, and I think it's three more people. Um, besides me doing these videos, I got Bounty Blue, um, Ashley Miller, and Closet Freak. Those are the three that I know that's doing reviews on R&B Divas Atlanta. So, um, be on the lookout for not only my review on this show, but theirs. Because I know they're going to be, um, tripping you out. Like, that's my YouTube family. Those are my people, so, you know, we all support each other, so I'm going to support them. I know they're doing reviews, and, you know, we all bring something different to the table, so just, just get ready, you know what I'm saying? So, let's get into the show. The show opens up with Kiki Wyatt um, and her husband. I think she's singing the national anthem for her, pa for her pastor, and she didn't really want to do it because she felt like, okay, I got the trumpet awards coming up soon, so I need to let my vocals rest, but she went ahead and did it anyway. But the thing was... You know, while she was up there trying to do the national anthem, somehow, some way, she started off doing it a cappella. But then the next thing you know, a band came behind her and was playing it off key. And, you know, she was upset about that. And my whole thing is, folks on Twitter were all mad for her talking about how she don't um, have any type of professional... Or what, well, she's not. Well, she's very unprofessional. But my thing is, I probably would have been upset too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm up here trying to do the national anthem or whatnot, and you know what I'm saying? This shit ain't even on cue. I didn't even know I wasn't gonna do it a cappella. I mean, it is what it is. So I would have been upset too. But I think she could have handled it with a little more tact. You know what I'm saying? Even though I understand why she was upset, but um, I would have handled it way more tact than she did. But you know, it is what it is. Um, I don't remember what this Selena scene was about, but I can say, oh, I, but I can say that I've always loved Selena and her voice. It's just that I can never get into all her albums. But as far as some of her songs, like I'm Your Woman or Guess What or Hit On Me or Tonight I'm Letting Go, those were my songs. So, oh, and Faithful to You, those were my jams. But I just could never get into her full albums like that. But this show really made me like her as a person. I don't know if it's made me want to listen to more of her music, but it's made me like her as a person. I like her personality. As far as Monique and Therese um, is, is concerned, I really do like their relationship as far as I'm concerned. Um, I just think that, you know, I like the fact that Monifa is very open with her lesbianness or whatnot. And, you know, they're not, she's not afraid to show it because, you know, for years before um, this show, there were rumors about her being a lesbian. And I remember her doing a song a long, long time ago. I think I was like 11 years old. And it was called I Can Tell. And that was off her last studio album. I think it was her third one that came out back in 2000. It was right before my little brother was born. And it was called um, I Can Tell. And um, in the video, um, I didn't think, uh, you know, there was rumors that the song was about her can her being able to tell that her man was gay. But the song wasn't necessarily about that, but that's what the video was. You know what I'm saying? So people were saying that she was gay back then, but, you know, she never really spoke on the rumors or anything like that. But, you know, that's why I wasn't surprised about her being a lesbian um, when R&B Divas came on. Um, with that being said, um, let's get into Welkie Gilbert. Okay, now, Welkie, free willy looking ass bitch, she was in the studio, and she was recording. I don't know what the hell she calling us recording, you know what I'm saying? She's saying that her music is dating again, and this is the first time that music is not an obligation to her anymore, so I guess I can get the bitch that, you know what I'm saying? Like, the bitch can't sing, and, you know... She really wasn't passionate about music anymore, but I can tell that she kind of is getting there now. But, you know, it is what it is. It's all about her, um, whatever the name of her damn 
clothing line is from Simply Fashions. So anyway, um, Selena wanted to invite the girls to her house for a dinner. So they can, because so, she had, her and her sister, Celicia, had um, an announcement to make. And um, she called, she even called Nikki, even though her and Nikki had been having issues, she called Nikki and to come, but Nikki didn't answer her phone. So when it all came down to the dinner at her house, you know, her and her sister was talking and, you know, her sister asked her what the issue was between Selena and Nikki and Nikki bas and Selena basically said that she feels like Nikki is fraudulent. And I believe it too, because all she ever does, you know what I'm saying? She was talking all this shit before R and B D was even started, talking about how, you know, it was gonna be nothing like basketball wives or real housewives of Atlanta. Then when you get on the show, she's just as worse as they are. You know what I'm saying? And mind y'all, I am not turned up tonight simply because I'm annoyed as fuck and I don't wanna talk too loud because I don't wanna wake no stupid ass people up, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, back to the video. So, you know, everybody comes except for Faith because she's out of town. And everybody is wondering where well Kiki is. And um, Kiki was like, well, you know, you know, Nikki ain't coming. You know what I'm saying? You know, she is not coming to this meet after everything that's been going on between you and Nikki. She is not coming. So then the, um, the doorbell rung and lo and behold, it was well Kiki. So when she came in, you know, she automatically tried to take the spotlight and start some shit. Like she came up in um, Selena's house because she ain't had nowhere to sit. My thing is, she probably would have, you know, prepared, you know, somewhere for you to sit if you would have answered your motherfucking phone and let her know that A, I was coming, or B, I wasn't coming, or C, fuck it, I'm not coming. One of the three, you know what I'm saying? So, girl. Stop coming up in the house already trying to create mess. You know what I'm saying? So, please, sit down. So, as they were talking about it, um, Celicia was like, well, you know, this is about a tour with all of y'all. And I got, uh, you know, I was talking to some people and, you know, there's a plan for a tour. But it's up to y'all whether y'all want to do the tour or not. And here go Welky. And the screen screen talking about when, you know, it's one thing for a tour plan, but I'm all about the tour offers. Bitch, be grateful because you've been out of the scene for how long? And ain't nobody been asking you and knocking on your door for no damn tour. Sit the fuck down, bitch. So then, you know what I'm saying? Um, Monifa decided to, you know, ask the question to see if, you know, if they can get all work together. And because of the situation with Nikki and Selena. So then, you know, Nikki was like, well, I'm not sure about that. And then Selena was like, well, I can coexist with anyone. That's how I do. So then that's when Nikki was like, well, long because it's not people mushing people, pushing people, cussing people out, then absolutely. So then that's when Selena was like, well, since we've never done that, Wilkie decided to make it make it the point to um, Selena mushed Monifa. Monifa said that she did mush her, I think. It was something like that. I think she, I, I really couldn't. I think she said she did mush her. But then, you know, uh, Wilkie also said that Selena pushed her friend in the club. And she also said that she got in her face after cocktails. So then, I guess Selena had enough by that point. And she told her to get, you know, get the step and get out of her house. Because if she going to come in this motherfucking line, she going to have to go. So that's when Wilkie was like, um, you know what I'm saying? She didn't want to come anyway, so she left. And, you know, Nikki read her, told her to suck 10 dicks on the way out, and she left. And, you know, Nikki with Wilkie was basically saying that her relationship with Selena is done, basically. So then, you know what I'm saying, um, Wilkie and Monifa met up. They was working out, and Monifa really wanted to know the situation and why it's so intense between her, between Wilkie and Selena. Welky basically said that she doesn't like Selena because of the situation with her mush and Monifa. Monifa felt like that was her issue with Selena and it's not her issue. So why is she, you know, going off the handle about something that ain't got nothing to do with her? And my whole thing is, Welky is using this situation with Selena, you know what I'm saying, with Selena and Monifa as a crutch to say that, you know, because she did that to Monifa, that's why I don't like her. But, bitch, you never did like her. You didn't like her on the first season. So, what the fuck are you talking about, bitch? That's all I'm saying. You using anything in your power to say that. What you, but, the, see, the thing is, you don't like Selena because she put you in your place. And you that type of bitch that don't like to be put in your place when you need to be put in your place. That's all I got to say, bitch. Ugh, I just can't stand that free Willie Clifford, the big red dog looking ass bitch. That's probably why Brownstone didn't work, because I can I already tell that you was a bitch then and you a bitch now. Anyway, Latasha Scott arrives on the show 
And, you know, everybody knows that I'm all tin candy, and for years I never did like Fat Tasha. But my thing is, um, I like her music as of late, so I'm not going to say that I'm some huge Latasha Sky supporter because I'm not, but I have liked her music. Go check out her songs, Bad Time and Complicated featuring Wale and another song called So Long. I have been anticipating her music, but I never did like her because I always feel like she was throwing candy shade. So, um, you know, since um, Faith Evans wasn't there, she was there to take Faith Evans' place for the Trumpet Awards for the Shaka Khan tribute. And from the moment um, Latasha got there, she noticed that there was tension between Nikki and Selena. And Monifa wanted to address the elephant in the room. And Selena basically felt like, you know, this bitch is a ghost to me. She ain't shit to me. It's whatever. So then... Um, Kiki was trying to, uh, you know, besides the Shaka Khan tribute, she had to perform with Avant, so uh, Avant wasn't there, and he had missed his flight, so she had to do it by herself, and I guess the dude that she was working with was saying that she was playing too much, and she got annoyed and got up and left, and I'm like, Kiki, girl, stop it, because of the simple fact, stop being immature, like, you ain't got to act like that, be professional, so, um, they had the Trumpet Awards, and, you know, they on the red carpet, and I must say that Monifa really needs to get rid of that Welch's grape juice ass hairdo. Like, she really do need to get rid of it. Like, go back to black. Get that purple shit out of your head. Get that grape dew out of your head. But um, Therese actually looked cute. She looked like a um, a film at the um, at the Trump Awards. She gave me some STEM realness. Um, I don't know what the fuck Welkie was wearing, but she looked like she was wearing She by Sheree. Um, as far as I'm concerned... Um, as well, you know, it was a good performance. They all did good, but I felt like Latasha was doing the most up there on that stage. She was doing the most. Like that damn, all the extra ass runs that she was doing really wasn't necessary in my opinion. But you know, the whole um, performance was the shit, and I didn't watch the Trumpet Awards, but it was nice to see it on the show. And I just think that she did. They all did a good job. So kudos to them for that. Um, that was the, this is the end of my R&B Divas video. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this was a good season opener. Um, it was, it had its share of drama. It wasn't the ratchet drama like on Love and Hip Hop that we like to see. Um, uh, but you know, I can't wait for the, um, uh, for the next week's episode. Angie Stone arrives on her and Kiki Why get into it. So I can't wait to see that, but. It's going to be a very good season. I can already tell by the previews. But can I just say this? Can Tevin Campbell come for R&B Divas LA Season 3? I'm just saying. But with that being said, follow me on Twitter at www.twitter.com slash Mr. Underscore Still Standing with Dr. G. And follow me on Instagram at King of the South 23 I'm out of here, you guys. Um, be on the lookout for Closet Freak, Bounty Blue, and my girl Ashley Miller's. R&B Divas reviews. If any of my other people, my other YouTube fam do some reviews, I'm going to let y'all know about that. And be sure to um, subscribe to my girl, China Dossie. And I'm out of here, you guys. Peace.